Welcome to Drawing from Nature. Today we're going to be drawing a mantis, one of nature's most fascinating predators, not only just because of how they catch their prey, but what they're capable of catching. For example, do you know what the largest type of animal is that a mantis is capable of catching? Well, I'll give you a hint that they're not just limited to bugs and other insects. If you're interested to know how big it gets, stick around while we draw from nature. Mantids are one of the most fascinating insects that we have here on the planet. They have interesting life cycles, they have interesting behaviors, and I think one of the reasons that people find them so fascinating is because the way that they look reminds us of ourselves. They seem to stand upright, they have four legs that they use very similarly to our arms, they have a head that can turn and pivot, similar to our own, and even the head seems to be on top of a neck. There are over 2,000 species of mantis worldwide, and here in the United States we're lucky enough to have 20, and the one that we're going to be drawing today is very famous. It's called the Praying Mantis. Before we begin with that, though, I'd like to talk about the tools that we're going to be using. Here in front of me I have a large sheet of paper. You don't have to have a large sheet of paper. Any size will do. We're going to talk about how to fit your drawing here on my page and on your page there at home. The crayons that we're going to be using are just simple uh, crayons. Uh, I have a black, a red, orange, yellow, green, blue, purple, and a brown crayon as well. The first step as we lay out our paper is to decide how big of an image that we're going to be creating. Like I said, I have a very large sheet of paper here. You might have one that's smaller at home. Maybe you have one that's even bigger at home. We don't want to have our mantis be too small or too big for our paper. First off, mantises are usually climbing in trees. I think it would be nice if we had kind of a branch. So let's make a branch together. And your branch doesn't have to be exactly like mine. It could be different. But I think what we'd like to do is have a, a general sloping from one side down to the other. So I'm going to pick a point maybe right around here on my paper. And I'm going to go from here down to a point on the other side that's just a little bit lower. So it's a little bit of a downhill direction. So here we go. And I'm going to draw lightly. This is what we call a guideline. Uh, we're going to go back later and darken it up, but this will be for laying things out. So starting over here, and let's do that downward slope. Just like that. Now, the branch that the mantis is going to be on is going to have a bit of a thickness. Let's say it's maybe about that thick. Yours could be thinner, yours could be thicker. I'm going to make mine about this thickness, and I'm going to follow this line that we just drew. So we'll make two lines that are parallel. And parallel means that if they keep going off in both different directions, they're never going to touch. Here we go, a parallel line. All right, that's a good basic branch. We might make some little twigs coming off of that later on, but I think that'll do well for now. So our mantis is going to be sitting up on top here. I'm going to have the head and thorax uh, on this side and the abdomen is going to go off in that direction. Like I mentioned earlier, a mantis is an insect. Uh, if an animal is an insect, it means it has three basic body parts and it has six legs. It has a head, a thorax, and an abdomen. So let's start with our abdomen. That's the largest section of the mantis. and We're going to make that around this area here. Why don't we start around the center of our page, just a little bit up from our stick. I'm going to make mine a little bit higher than where our stick is. So right around here. And I'm going to make an oval shape. And the oval shape is going to start around there. And we'll have it end right around there. I'm going to make a little mark right there. So we have our stick, our beginning point of the abdomen, and the end of the abdomen. To begin, I'm going to make a curved line up and then down to meet there. Going up and then down to the back. Why don't you give that a try? On the bottom, we're going to do a very similar bump. Starting here and curving down to the end. Just like that. So that is the abdomen, one of the three basic parts of an insect. Next, we're going to create the thorax. The thorax, if you've uh, ever seen an ant, is the section that's between the head and their abdomen that middle section there. And a mantis, they're unusual, they're unique. They're kind of elongated and stretched out. And they have two parts to their thorax. They have a 
prothorax up on the top that seems like their neck and then the rest of the thorax down here. So what I'm going to do to begin, because the thorax is a little bit complicated, <laughs> but don't get daunted. I'm sure we'll be able to figure it out together. We want to find out where the head's going to be. I think our head's going to be up here. I'm going to make a little mark right there. And I'm going to draw a straight line, a guideline, from here to that earlier mark that we made here. Straight line. Right down. So that's the center line of the thorax. If a mantis had bones, which they don't, that would be sort of the vertebrae, its spine going through the middle. Insects don't have their skeleton on the inside, they have their skeleton on the outside, that's called an exoskeleton. Humans and other mammals have their skeleton on the inside, that's called an endoskeleton. Exoskeleton means outside, exterior, endoskeleton, endo means inside. Okay, so let's work on the this part of the thorax, which is covered in that exoskeleton. Now I mentioned that their thorax has two parts. There's the prothorax and then the rest of it back here. Now, if you were to divide this up into three sections, one, two, three, divide that into three equal parts, the prothorax is his first third and the rest of the thorax is his second third. Let's make a little mark right across the line between the first third and the second third right there. Just a little cross. Okay? This is the line between the prothorax and the rest of the thorax. So let's connect between the head and in this point right here. And this is going to be kind of a curve like this, but with a little bit of a, a hump to the top. It goes up and then curves down. Up and then curves down. Okay? Let's work on the bottom part of this. The bottom part starts around here. This is about where its neck is. And it's going to be more of a straight line. Just like that. Okay? And this point is going to be where those, those four legs, its arms, attach right here. But we're going to first work on the rest of the thorax here. This uh, the rest of the thorax is going to be kind of similar to this prothorax in the front. It's going to have a little bit of a bump, and it's going to taper down. And then it's going to have a little bit of a bump on the back side here. So watch me first. We're going to do a bump, and a curve, and another bump. So bump, curve down, and another bump, just like that. And the bottom here is going to be sort of similar also. Uh, not going to be quite as curvy as this, more straight like this. And we're going to join it down to the abdomen right here. Just like that. All right, so now we have the insect's abdomen, its thorax, and we're going to work on the next section. Do you remember what it's called? <laughs> Pretty easy. The head. So uh, for the mantis, it's going to be looking in this direction, and from this angle, um, from the side of the head, the, its head is going to look a little bit like a kind of a teardrop, but falling upward. So the point is going down. The point is where the mouth is. So let's start by drawing kind of a circle here. And we'll make that teardrop. And instead of having it point straight down, we're going to have it point in this direction. Just like this. Right. You see that, how it's a little bit like a raindrop, like a teardrop? Falling like that. Okay. Head, thorax, abdomen, three basic body parts. Now let's work on the legs. All insects have six legs. So we are going to be having a couple come from back in this section back in the abdomen, and the four legs are going to be coming out from this area. The four legs are the most exciting, so let's save those for a second. <laughs> let's do the, uh, the back legs down here. Now there are four legs coming out here, two on our side, two on the far side. One section of legs are going to come from here. Let's make a little circle right there, just like that. The other section of legs, or the other uh, connection point for the other legs is going to be just behind them, just like that. So let's make a little circle. Just like that. Okay. Now these legs are going to come down to what is kind of like an elbow, and then they're going to go up to another joint, and then they're going to come down. Let's draw that kind of elbow. For us, it's an elbow. It's you know there's a different anatomy for insects, but we'll call it an elbow for now. I'm going to draw a little circle for where that elbow is, just just below that that leg's connection point. Now let's make the other little elbow, or I suppose if they're legs, you might want to call it a knee. 
Let's make the other knee, elbow, whatever, right here. Just a little bit behind that connection point, okay? Now, let's draw a line from the middle of here to there. Connect them in the middle of here to here. This would be a bone. Again, if they had internal skeletons, they don't. They have an exoskeleton, but it helps us to pair these things together. Next, let's make that second joint. This one's going to be over here. Let's make a little circle like that and connect. Straight line, just like that. And let's make the foot down over here. We'll just draw a straight line to the foot. So a little zigzag there. Let's work on this, uh, this middle leg here. The knee, if you want to call it that, is going to be right over here. A little joint in its leg. So we'll draw a little circle. And let's connect, just like that. And the foot's going to be down here somewhere. Eh, maybe we'll put the foot directly underneath. Straight line down, just like that. OK. Now, on the back side, we've got a couple other legs. And we're going to hint at those a little bit right now. So let's do the backside's knee, maybe near this one. And the other joint, maybe over here. And let's connect those. Line, line, and then down to a foot, maybe, on the other side of the branch. OK? Now we're going to work on this other back leg that's mostly going to be behind the abdomen here. In fact, I don't think we're going to see much of any of it, but we probably will see the back end of the leg over here. So let's just draw a line from about midway along your abdomen and just have it go diagonally down like that. So we have one, two, three, four legs. Now let's do those, those forearms. Now the forearms, like I said, they attach just between the prothorax and the rest of the thorax here. I'm going to make a little circle, just like we did here. This would be like the animal's shoulder joint. That comes down in the same way that these did, to an elbow, right there. And then it goes forward to, I guess, you, know, you might want to think of it as the wrist. All right? And then it's going to come down to a point here. But let's connect these dots. Down. Forward. And we're going to have, bring this one down, but not all the way to our stick, because this is just their, their front limb, and they are not walking around on top of this. These four limbs are what give praying mantises their name. The way that they pull them up, and they'll oftentimes stand like this, it reminds people of a praying position, and that is how they got their name. Sometimes people will incorrectly write the name praying mantis uh, in, in this way, and I will write it right here. P R E Y. You don't have to write it on yours. Sometimes people will write it in that way, uh, as in prey, as in the animal that the praying mantis is hunting. Praying mantises are notorious hunters. They eat all sorts of things. Usually they're eating things like flies, beetles, uh, bees, uh, maybe spiders, things of that nature. But some of the larger mantids can actually eat small reptiles, small mammals, small birds. Uh, so they're really notorious hunters. So sometimes when people are writing their name, they will think that because they are so effective at collecting prey, that they are praying mantises. Nope, they are P. R A Y, praying mantises. That's how they got their name. But you know, I think either way you spell it is probably equally accurate because they do look like they're praying and they are very good hunting predators. There are some, uh, there are some animals that will actually hunt the mantis. Uh, thing, uh, you know, frogs and things like that might hunt a mantis. And if a mantis feels threatened, they will also use these uh, forelimbs, which they use for being a predator for capturing their prey, they will also use these forelimbs for defense. They'll raise the forelimbs up uh, in a, as a way of striking at the predator that might be trying to predate on them. They have wings on the back. Not all mantises have wings, but uh, many of them do. They'll oftentimes uh, flip their wings out. Some wings on mantises will have bright colors in there. They're trying to make themselves look big and mean and scary, and you don't want to mess with them. So. The uh, mantises uh, both prey and are preyed upon. All right, let's uh, work a little bit more on this, uh, this head area. Why don't we start uh, adding 
the eye areas. Mantises have very large eyes. They're perched up on top of the head. Here's one. We're going to see the other one just on the other side. So large, large circle up here. They're compound eyes. You know, as insects have, uh, they are able to look uh, forward and get uh, binocular vision the same way that, that you and I do. That helps them with their hunting and uh, they're very good predators because of that. They can also uh, rotate their head 180 degrees around. Turning around completely is 360 degrees. Turning around from facing forward to facing straight backwards, that's 180 degrees, which is half of a rotation. And humans can't do that. They can rotate their heads much further. The furthest I can rotate is almost 90 degrees, zero to almost 90 degrees. They can turn all the way around and look straight behind themselves. Very effective hunters. Uh, from here, we have a couple extra appendages, which are also used as senses, like their eyes are, and that's their antennae, and they use those for smelling. They're gonna come from just between the eyes, right up here, and we're gonna have one like this, and the other maybe up a little bit like that. I'm only going to draw one of these four limbs because they are generally held together. And I think at the angle we're looking at, they'd be right on top of each other. When we get into the details, maybe we will make it so you can see a little hint of the, the other one behind, but it's very common for them to be held together and they almost look like one from the side. All right, so there is our basic layout. It fits on the page and you can see the basic structures that we have for an insect. Head, thorax, abdomen, Six legs, albeit one of them is, is hidden behind the, the other one there. All right, so let's start getting into uh, putting some detail here into our image. I mentioned that mantises have wings. Uh, let's work on their wing casings. The wing casings uh, fit on top here, and they extend uh, probably about three quarters of the way down the body. So I'm going to divide this abdomen in half, and then I'm going to go halfway between these two lines, make a little line there. This would be the three-quarter mark right around there, and that is about where the wing casings are going to stop. We're going to st start here from the center point, and we're going to do a curved line across here to suggest the wing casing on top. Here we go. Just like that. Underneath, they have some segments of their exoskeleton, and we will hint at those. One, two, three, four, five, and let's do one more. Just like that. Okay. Next, let's give some thickness to these legs here. I'm going to follow the dimensions of these circles we created, and straight line, straight line, and same here. This is drawing the actual surface of that, that exoskeleton. to there. And as we go down to the foot, it's going to taper and get very, very thin, pretty much to a point. Here we go, straight down, just like that. And on their foot, they've got a few little hook attachments, claws. Okay, let's work on, well, before we move up here, let's just finish up this leg back here. This is the last section, just like this, very thin. And we're not going to see the foot, it's on the other side of the stick just like that. Okay, let's move to this middle set of legs here. Same as before, just creating the exoskeleton armor. There we go. And then down to the foot, getting very thin down here. And a couple of little claws there. We'll work on the back leg here, the same situation, just following your earlier guidelines, your earlier bone lines. Some of this leg is sort of hidden behind that leg, that's fine. And then the thin section, and it gets terminated by the top surface of this stick because the other leg, again, is in the back. Okay, now these are the fun ones. These are the forelimbs. These are the ones that they use for their hunting. There are spines on these. These are the ones that feel like, like hands. Now, these are not going to be straight like all the other legs that we've done. There's going to be a little bit of curvature to them, so you might want to pay attention to that, and then you can 
you can do as I do, okay? This, the back side is gonna bulge out and then taper down. Here we go. Bulge out and then taper down. And let's do the front side. The front is going to bulge forward and then taper down. It's doing their, their bicep right there, okay? Now we're gonna work on, on this section here and it's, it's uh, fairly similar. The top is gonna be a little flatter, just a little, a little upward curve to it. The bottom has much more curve. Here we go. Just like that, okay. Next, we're gonna do the last bit here. These are gonna be thicker than the rest of these limbs. Curve forward and a curve back. And we can put a little hook on the end there, like a claw. Okay. We're gonna make a couple little mouth parts here, line across, and then some lines to suggest the jaw pieces. All right. And now we can move on to some color. Okay. Uh, mantises come in all different colors. Many are green, many are brown. They're all trying to camouflage. This praying mantis that we're gonna be drawing is green. So I'm gonna put down my black crayon and I'm gonna pull out a green crayon here. We're gonna do some solid lines for our edges, the outside edges, and then we're gonna go in and we're gonna color things up. Why don't we start with uh, top of our abdomen here, okay? Do a, a solid line up and then go to the back of the wing case. And we're gonna stop right here. Right there. And then we're gonna curve this forward. Okay. This has some texture to it. It's gonna have some lines across like this. Okay, and then we can color it in. If you're using crayons, you can just use the side of the crayon and that can help you to color in large areas pretty quickly. I'm moving my crayon in the, the direction of growth. Remember those lines on the wing casing went in this direction? So it's nice to do your strokes in the same direction. It'll help to uh, intensify that feel of, of growth in that direction. Okay. Now we're gonna draw a line down the center because the top of this mantis is colored green and the bottom is lighter colored. So we're gonna draw a line from about here to the tip of the abdomen right there. Just like that. We can go dark over the top, like there. And then these little uh, sections of the exoskeleton, we can darken those up, like that. Darken up, like that. And color them in. Just like that. Okay, we're gonna stay with the green, so we're gonna come back to the lower abdomen, which is gonna be more of a yellow color. Why don't we work a little bit on these, these legs? Again, coloring them in the direction of the, the growth. Going right across the leg, like that. And down and the back leg. And then we'll do the front legs. Coming across. When you are drawing or coloring, the way that you do your drawing and coloring can really suggest the texture. If you're trying to draw something that has a smooth texture, doing nice smooth motions with your crayon can suggest that smooth uh, texture. If you have a rough texture like fur, you can suggest that as well. All right, now we're gonna do these, these front legs here. Same thing as, as the backs. Like that. 
that across. And we are going to come back and put a little bit more detail as well on these because there are some other details that are very important uh, for their ability to catch prey. Okay, greened in just like that. And the head is going to be a slightly different shade of green, but we will have some green in there so we can lightly go over the head section. Just like that. And lightly go over the thorax. We don't want it as dark as some of the other areas because we are going to be mixing some colors in here. And I mentioned that the bottom of the abdomen uh, is going to be more of a yellow color, but it will have some green in it. So we can very lightly just suggest some green in there. Okay. And the next thing we're going to be doing is coloring in some of these other shades. Let's start with yellow. I mentioned that there was some yellow under here. We've got a yellow crayon. And we're going to add some yellow to this underside of the abdomen. Just some light yellow under there. Just across there, nice and smooth. All right, and we're gonna add a little bit of yellow through here and through the head, right over the thorax. This is the prothorax in the front that looks like their neck, and the rest of the thorax is all down here. Again, like I said, in most inse insects, the thorax is much smaller. It's dramatically elongated in the mantis, which seems to give them greater range greater ability to strike foot out at their prey. We're going to put some yellow up into the head area here, coloring the head with a little bit of yellow. I've been leaving the jaws relatively uncolored. They're going to be a little bit darker later on. It's okay if you got some color on there already, but we're going to be coming back and giving them a little bit of brownish color. All right, now that we've gotten all of our areas basically colored, we do want to put a little bit more green I'm sorry, a little bit more yellow into our green. Uh, that'll give it a little bit of like a, like a pale green leaf color because after all they're using this as camouflage, both to hide from their predators and also hide from their prey. So I'm gonna go across all these green areas in the same direction that we did before with a little bit of yellow. One interesting thing about insects is that where you and I breathe through our mouths into our lungs, insects breathe directly through their, through their skin. There are some other animals that do that as well, uh, but uh, insects use that as their way of getting oxygen into their body. Just like you and I, they need oxygen to survive and they exhale carbon dioxide, just like you and I. All right, so we're turning this green into a yellow green, and now we're just gonna work on those four limbs. Nice and yellowy green there. Now, if as you're doing this, you're finding some areas are darker and some areas are lighting, don't, uh, lighter, don't really worry about that because as camouflage works, Sometimes there's little darker shades, sometimes there's little lighter shades, and that would actually help the mantis to hide even more effectively. The next color that we're gonna add here is some brown. Brown is a very common color in nature, and because of that, the mantis has incorporated it into its, its color palette for its camouflage. I'm peeling back a little bit of paper uh, off of my crayon so I can get a little bit of side here. And the areas that are gonna be a brown are around the jaws, through the thorax, and under the abdomen here. And we're also gonna add a little bit of brown to the legs. But let's start with the head over here. The jaws have brown on them. I'm coloring that in right there. There's a little bit of brown underneath the head. So we're gonna put a spot of brown down over here, almost like a shadow. And now we're gonna add some brown sections to the thorax here. There's gonna be one brown section up here and another brown section here. And I'm going to Lay this one out, so you can see. We have a little patch of brown here, just like that, and it kind of stops around here. And then similarly, on the back side of the thorax, another patch of brown over just the top side. There we go. 
just like that. We've got some stripes of brown that kind of run on the uh, demarcation zone between the green and the yellow. I'm gonna do a stripe of brown right down the side here. Just like that. And another stripe of brown just below it. With a little bit of that yellowy green between the two stripes. Just like that. And let's get some brown into this. We're gonna do it darker on the bottom side, and then we're going to fade up to the top. Gradate is what it's called. So we're making a gradient. So we get lighter and lighter as we go up. Using this kind of as a, a shading technique. Lighter and lighter as we go up. Whatever you're holding, just push down less on the paper, and it'll leave less of a mark on there. Okay. We're going to put a little bit of brown into these legs, mostly on the bottom side, kind of as a a way of suggesting shadow here. So we're re-darkening the bottom sides of these legs there and here and in the back there and maybe on this leg right there and a little bit down this leg as well. Okay. So now that we have that together, we're going to add some more details. We're going to add some more hard lines on our animal. We're gonna work on the face a little bit and we're gonna work on these very important forelimbs here. So go back to black and we're gonna start drawing some of these lines like we really mean them, okay? First, we're gonna start with the bottom side of this thorax. We're gonna draw a pretty tough line starting right under the fore, uh, forelimb here and it's gonna end here, and we're gonna give it a little bit of a curve up. We did kind of a straight line earlier, but what we really want this to be is a bit curved up. Here we go. Nice and smooth, just like that. Okay. Over here, we're gonna do something similar, kind of curled up to the head. Again, using the black, just like that. We're gonna go over these lines we did earlier in black, because we really mean them. If there's anything you want to do to alter your lines, if you feel like the bumps are too big or the bumps are too small, this is a good time to do that. Just like that. All right. We can draw a little bit of a line between the thorax and the abdomen. And now let's kind of go over this, this wing casing a little bit, right over the top, nice and dark. Right to the end of the wing casing, right there. And then we're going to swoop back with a darker line. Okay, while we're here, I mentioned that there are some texture lines on this wing casing. Let's draw some of those. We're going to start here and swoop back. And you can do these a little light at first to practice, and then you can make them a little darker. Like that. And as this curves around to the back side, these are going to change direction. This one's curved down. By the time we get up here, they're going to be curved up a little bit as they go over that backside. And between the two, the curvature is going to change right about straight, uh, in the, right in the middle between these two curves. It'll be just about a straight line like that. And then a line that's slightly curved up and a line that's slightly curved down, maybe a little bit more right there. And see how the wing casing moves over there. Okay. Next, let's work on these legs. We're gonna darken them up so we really mean it. All right, I'm darkening over the bottom edge of this leg. Again, this is their exoskeleton. Mantises, like other insects, do need to shed throughout their life as they, uh, as they go from one stage to another. They start as, a, as an egg and end their life as a adult mantis. Their lives, usually in the wild, are somewhere around a year. Somewhere around 10 months to a year. Although some people who have kept mantises as pets, as you recall, I mentioned mantises are very popular with people. Again, because they, I think, because they remind us of ourselves and they have such interesting life cycles. Some people keep mantises as pets and in some cases people have kept mantises for over a year up to 14 months. But that's about as long as mantises have ever been known to, to live. They live a lot shorter lives than we do. 
especially if they're males and they have mated with a female, the, the females have a tendency to, to kill their mates <laughs> after they have mated with them, uh, which uh, is an interesting and, if you're a male mantis, horrifying <laughs> fact of life for the mantises. Now, I'm starting to work under the abdomen here, and you recall we have these little lines coming down. What I'm going to do is instead of drawing just a straight line across the bottom, I'm going to make a little bump between each of these little segments. There's a little segment that comes down there, a little segment that comes down there, and I'm going to make just a little bump, kind of like a little cushion, and then another little bump right there, sort of like a caterpillar where they have kind of the chubby little sections. We're kind of trying to create that, that feeling a little. And then a little bit of a bump here. This is another section there, and one that's hidden behind the legs. Just like that. Okay. Got one more leg in the back here to darken up. There we go. And now, before we get to the head, let's work on these forelimbs. Now, the back side of this forelimb is smooth, so we can draw that in smoothly, just like that, up to the top. And the top side of this forelimb uh, uh, section is smooth, so we can draw this smoothly. Just like that. So this back side is smooth, this top side is smooth, and the front side of this is smooth. Just down to the, the little claw. Now the fun part. We do have some, some spines here. And the spines stick out in a downward direction. So I'm going to make some little spines with my crayon here, like that. And now I'm going to connect them, like like ocean waves, like, like that, okay? And we'll practice that again right here. We're gonna draw a few lines, curving forward here, there, there, maybe another one on the back. And then what we're gonna do is draw little curves like, like the, the valleys between ocean wave crests. There's a little curve, a little curve, a little curve, a little curve, just like that. And there's a couple more claws on this one. I'm going to draw one, two claws like that. We're going to do a dark line between the top here and this claw. All right. And then some curves like that. And curve like that. Looks a lot more fierce now, doesn't it? All right. Let's get a little green in there. So I'm going to pick my green crayon back up and we'll just put a little bit of color into these little spines. Just like that. All right. The last thing we're going to work on is the head over here. I mentioned that the mantises have these very large compound eyes. We drew one as a circle here, and we're pretty much just going to darken up that circle because the eyes on the head are pretty much just giant circles. There's one, the other one's on the, the back side there, and now we're going to uh, do the rest of the lines on the head. We'll see the thorax end here. We can draw a line for that, and now we'll draw the rest of the head. Curve around there, under the chin here, and the top of the head, right there. Now I mentioned that these are compound eyes, and because they're compound eyes, that means that there are lots of little lenses. It's this uh, kind of array of many lenses all shoved together, kind of like a, a honeycomb, if you're looking at a bee's honeycomb. There's lots of little honeycomb sections, very similar for the eyes. So we'd like to hint at that texture, but I think if we did it with black, it would be too bold. So what I'm going to do, we did this lightly in green, then lightly in yellow. I'm going to take the green crayon, and we're going to make some little lines in here to suggest that there's an array of little lenses here. It's going to be a bit of a grid. So I'm going to draw some hard lines across it in that direction, and now I'm going to do another direction. Like that. Now the actual eyes, um, it's more of a hexagonal kind of combination of eye of different lenses in there. We're just hinting at it here by drawing some of these these lines there. But it definitely gives the idea there's some kind of a, a grid going on in that eye. Why don't we put a little bit of color on top of our antennae lines? Again, they use the antennae for their sense of smell. And the very last thing that we're going to do is to create an environment for our mantis. 
Like we said, mantises uh, oftentimes are masters of disguise. They like to blend in with their environment. So let's suggest that right now by working on this little stick that it's on. We earlier made some guidelines. Now we can go in and we can darken those up. And I mentioned earlier, as you're working with colors and you're working with uh, lines, the way that you draw them can suggest the texture. Now the mantis has a smooth texture, at least this one does, the praying mantis does, but the branch could have a bit of a rougher texture and you can watch how I do that a little differently. I'm just gonna make a bunch of little straight lunges here. We can make some little crisscrossing. Make it just look like the branch is a different texture than the mantis. And the same on the bottom. You know, these lines, they're not exact. I don't know exactly what, where any of these are going. But something like, something like that. All right. Why don't we make this a brown branch? So we'll take our brown crayon and just go in the direction of the growth, going around the legs, around the legs, like that. We're gonna color the entire branch brown, just lightly. Oftentimes when you're doing a drawing, it can be uh, acceptable and even more interesting if you put more detail into your subject, in this case that's the mantis, and less detail into the environment. It causes people's eyes to be drawn towards the subject of your drawing. So we've got a little bit of brown there. Now let's just go over with some black. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put a little bit of uh, black on the top, just like this, just using the side of the crayon. And fade that down towards the center. And same on the bottom, but maybe a little bit darker. Just like that. And fading up. Now we can make maybe a few little lines here like the bark, maybe it has like some notches in it. I'm not planning these out. <laughs> Just making little, little nicks and scuffs. Something that suggests that this is not made of plastic. This is a real organic material. It's lived a rough life. There's been some storms. Maybe it almost cracked here. Like that. And maybe right here we could put a little, uh, little bud. Maybe there's going to be a leaf there later on. We'll put like a little, little bud like that. So it curves up, you make kind of an oval shape, have some little petals for your bud. And why don't we darken that in? Just like that. And then a little bit of brown. Again, yours doesn't have to be exactly like mine. There we go. There's one place I noticed I missed. Back of the abdomen there, let's just darken the top up right here. A little bump to that line, a little bump to that line, bump to the end. And there it is, the praying mantis, one of nature's most fascinating insects. I hope you enjoyed drawing along with me and learning about these wonderful animals. And I also hope you'll join me next time when we draw from nature. <laughs>